This video examines the change in sign of the G00 or time component term of the Kerr metric as an observer moves from the exterior region of the black hole into its interior. It then looks at the implications for the full velocity of such an observer. All right, so in previous videos, we looked at the structure of the Kerr black hole. The yellow surface here is the outer stationary limit surface. And the blue one here is the inner stationary limit surface. The red dotted thing is the ring singularity. The green surface is the inner event horizon and the red surface is the outer event horizon. And we're interested in the region outside the outer stationary limit surface and then what happens to the sign of the zero zero component of the metric as an observer moves inwards from the exterior region and into the interior region. Uh, the space-time interval or the line element is given by this and Boyer-Lindquist coordinates as we've seen in previous videos as we've also seen as asymptotically approaches negative one uh, for large values of r moving away from the black hole. Outside the black hole the time component, the time-time component, zero-zero component of the metric is negative. Now in the region beyond the outer stationary limit we've seen that the uh, time component of the metric is negative and it is possible as a result to hold a fixed position here and we'll see why in a minute. It's possible we can hold a fixed position so we can set dr d theta d phi to zero. A stationary observer observing the black hole in a spatially fixed position. The fourth velocity for this observer then is this this one here where only the time component is non-zero. The spatial components are zero. The observer is stationary with respect to the black hole at some fixed position and is only moving in time. Now this condition is allowed because it satisfies the normalization condition that the um, scalar product, the inner product of the four velocity itself gives us negative c squared. And we can do that here because we can see that the um, time component of the metric in this region is negative and so that we see that it satisfies the normalization condition that the four velocities dotted with itself, the scalar product or the inner product gives us this negative constant here. So that's allowed. So an observer can hold a fixed position outside the black hole. All right. Now the stationary limit surfaces that bound the inner and outer ergospheres occur when or occurs when the time component of the metric is set to zero. When we solve for that, we get the outer stationary limit surface and the inner one. Now between the ring singularity and the outer stationary limit surface, so from the ring singularity here, that's the inner stationary limit surface all the way out to the outer stationary limit surface, we're going to see that the time component of the metric is positive, not negative. All right, so let's have a look at the time component of the um, metric in the Boyer-Lindquist coordinates, and we're going to plot it over a range of values of R, uh, both interior and exterior to the, to the black hole. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to look, we, we need to deal with a theta term here, because there's that theta term, we need to uh, set that to a value to help us. We're just going to do a two-dimensional plot, it's easy to interpret, and a three, three D one. And so we're going to set theta to pi on 2. We're going to look at the equatorial plane. So throughout this video, theta will be set to pi on 2. Just a reminder of previous videos, A star is the, is the dimensionless spin parameter. And A, the spin parameter, this one here, A, is equal to gm on c squared times A asterisk. All right? So A squared can be replaced by all of this. Um, and that's the relationship between the two. Now, a plot of G00, the time component of the metric, versus R for theta is pi on 2 in general. For all the curved black holes are going to have this general form here, where this crossover point occurs when G00 is equal to 0, and that gives you the outer stationary limit surface. The inner stationary limit surface will occur at R equals 0, so it's along here, along the axis here, but the outer one occurs here, and that's the crossover point. Past that point, GTT, this time component here, is all negative. Okay, within the black hole, it is negative. 
right up to R is zero, right up to the ring singularity. Okay, so make it a bit more real. We'll have a look at a specific example. Let's pick Cygnus X1 as a mass of 21.2 plus a minus 2.2 solar masses, a dimensional spin parameter A star of almost 1.9985, according to Miller Jones and all and others, 2021. And just in a previous video, uh, I plotted the um, the outer stationary limit surface and just showing you the extreme rotation there causes it to flatten quite a bit. Now for Cygnus X1, a plot of the time component of the um, metric versus R the radius for the equatorial plane, theta is pi on two, gives us this plot here. Okay, and the outer stationary limit surface occurs about this 65,000, 62,500, something like that, yeah. 62,500 uh, meters. Now this is in coordinates. This is not actual physical radius. This is just coordinate radius. So just be aware of that. Now observer attempt to remain at a fixed position R theta phi in this region that's inside the stationary limit surface will again have a four velocity of this form here. Now because wants to, because the observer wants to remain uh, spatially stationary, the, the um, spatial velocities are zero here, so they all drop out. We just have motion in time. Now, normalizing this, given that g00 is greater than zero, gives us u dot u as this object here, it's not equal to negative c squared. It, it can't possibly be because um, u0 is positive, um, and because dt d tau will always be positive. In this case, g00 is also positive. So every term in here, in this entire expression, is all positive. And so it can't possibly be equal to minus c squared. And so no stationary holding, no observer can hold a stationary position once they've crossed the outer stationary limit surface that it is not possible for them to hold a stationary position within the black hole. It just, you, you cannot satisfy the normalization condition here. All right, so no observer can remain a fixed position within the um, black hole. Now there's one other region to consider and it turns out to have an interesting consequence. So we have the ring singularity here. Okay, it occurred at z equals zero, x squared plus y squared is a squared. In the previous video, we went through and solved all this, how we got it, we're setting rho squared equal to zero. Um, Okay, and we found that at r equals zero, we've got the ring singularity, r equals zero. Anything outside of that, r is greater than zero. And but in here, there is a physical distance. This is not zero, this is a physical distance. It's equal to, to the value of a. What we're gonna do, we're gonna say that from r equals zero, going inwards, we're going to set r less than zero. We're gonna give it a negative coordinate value. Not a negative physical distance, that's not possible. It's not a negative physical distance. We're just giving it a negative coordinate value. And coordinates are not the same thing as physical values. So coordinate values are not the same as physical values. We're just giving it a negative coordinate value. It is not a negative physical distance. That is a real physical distance in here. It's equal to A. All right. Now, a plot of G00 versus R for the equatorial plane now, including the bit within the outer stationary limit surface where R was positive. So that's all that. That's familiar from before. But now, in, in general, what you're going to find now is that inside the ring singularity where we've set R is less than zero, a coordinate value of less than a negative coordinate value, we get G00 becomes positive. All right, and that tells us that the zero zero component of the metric within the ring singularity region, not in the ring singularity itself where R equals zero because that's where things are crushed to infinite density, but any within that ring itself, G00 becomes negative again. All right, so let's have a look at a specific example in the case of Cygnus X1. Again, we're in the equatorial plane for all of these plots. And we find here's the branch over here for positive values outside the ring, but within the outer stationary limit, G00 or GTT is zero, uh, is positive, sorry, positive, positive. But inside the ring, it once again becomes negative. 
Okay, now this raise this result raises a possibility of an observer remaining in a fixed position in the ring, inside the ring region. Once again, observer may be able to hold a fixed spatial position for the reason that the normalized fall velocity or the square of the normalized fall velocity is minus c squared. It can be satisfied in this region, and that suggests that holding a stationary position within this region is possible. Okay, that's it.